Hello Friday, World Economic News. Start with NPR and CBO sees record budget gap at nearly $1.5 trillion. United States budget gap $1.5 trillion that the CBO want to admit to. So it's obviously more than that. Uh, the appropriate chart is there. St. Louis Fed gives us federal outlays that shows how much interest is being paid on that debt because that's the way it's being funded. It's come down an awful long way since the recession because interest rates have come down. So a lot of people are feeling very cocky about all this debt and thinking everything will be fine. At the moment, it's not bad. It's only about $200 billion a year. One day, it'll be an awful lot more than that. Yahoo News, CBO Social Security to run permanent deficits. The Congressional Budget Office, CBO again, said Wednesday that Social Security will pay out $45 billion more in benefits this year than it collects in payroll taxes, further straining the nation's finances. You'll have to sort out one day about this Social Security and whether it's a different thing or all part of the same bucket. Or just admit that it's all part of the same bucket and stop messing about. Eve, Naked to Capitalism, gives us FCIC insiders say report gives Wall Street a free pass, simply sought to validate conventional wisdom about the crisis. FCIC is the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission set up to look into what went wrong with all this financial shenanigans. And of course, it fudged it. It fudged the whole damn thing. But I'm seeing the slow grinding wheels of justice are coming from the bottom. It'll take years to get anywhere near the top, but they're grinding away from the bottom. But the top, down, totally fudged. Minyanville gives us Klaus Regling's Bar None Bailout Circus, the ESFS Bond Frenzy. EFSF FS is the European Bond F um, Bailout Fund, and it gets that AAA rating because they can only use half of it that I talked of. In this article, in Minyanville, they write, but mortgages aren't the only category with a risk-weighting hierarchy. Sovereign debt has one too, and under current Basel rules, here are the risk weightings for sovereign debt by rating level. And I won't read them to you, you can see them on the website, but for AAA, you don't have to hold any regulatory capital at all. And for different ratings, A, B, and under B-, minus, it goes 20% all the way to 150% of, of the holding in regulatory capital that has to be held. And it says, so when Regling noted yesterday that demand was growing for AAA rated assets, spurred by Basel III capital rules, I'd offer that what he's really saying is that investors want to buy his debt because they don't need to hold regula re regulatory capital against it. And this is the banks again and there are regulations. You cannot regulate the banks, full stop. Doesn't mean you can't try, but you've got to start regulating banks, always knowing that you can't regulate banks. Next, Financial Times Alphaville, S&P downgrades Japan to AA minus. Yes, sovereign downgrading Japan. Uh, that's still in the band of 0% of regulatory capital, but downgraded they are. And note that it, the headline is S&P downgrades Japan to AA minus. The whole Basel thing of central bankers, bank Basel regulating um, banks is based on the private rating agency's ratings. That works well, doesn't it? It shows how stupid the whole system is. And that's S&P that's downgraded Japan. And that affects the, um, when it go, rate, one more rating drop will affect the amount of regulatory capital banks have to hold if they hold Japanese debt. But based on S&P, a private outfit, with not a brilliant track record. Business line, open market deals, a monetary policy tool, RBI, that's the Reserve Bank of India. I won't bother too much with this article. You can read about it if you like, but it's a how the um, Bank of Eng Central Bank of India is trying to um, 
cope with inflationary expectations. Central banks are a good tool. They should not be thrown away. Their la lender of last resort is a worthy idea. Wallet Pop UK. Mortgage lending lower since 1999. New mortgage lending by the major banks dived to an 11.5 year low during December as potential buyers continued to stay away from the housing market, figures have revealed. The whole thing is over manipulated by central banks, banks and governments and everybody else. So when it does go wrong, it really does go wrong. Infectious greed, scrap metal cowboys. Paul Kedrosky has written this about Schneitzer steel of Portland, Oregon, but it's all about scrap, scrap metal. Scrap is going to be a huge part of our future. We're going to hear an awful lot about scrap. And an interesting sort of chart in the article, cities with the highest numbers and rates of NICB metal theft claims, Cleveland, Ohio, Flint, Michigan, Birmingham, Alabama, New Orleans, etc., there's going to be an awful lot of ripping down cabling and getting together scrap. Scrap things are going to be very valuable. The Economic Times, Australian dollar dampened by flood tax. Sydney, Wellington, the Australian dollar was robbed of early gains on Thursday after news of a tax to pay for flood damage was seen, further lessening the need for higher interest rates in the coming months again. Um, it's also important the higher interest rates would have come from the central bank. The central bank might now might think because the next tax out there they won't have to bother and that inf affects inflation expectations and the prices paid in the, sh in the shops. The New Zealand dollar fared better after the Reserve Bank of New Zealand said rates were still likely to rise over the next couple of years though it would wait for concrete signs of recovery before moving. Might have to wait a long time, but again, central banks. World News, Australia's res resource house signs a huge coal deal with China. Australian miner resource house said Saturday it has signed a 60 billion US dollar coal deal with energy hungry China, calling it the country's biggest ever export contract coal. Next, world news again, and coal, conf coal confirms its lead as king of fuels. Generations ago, the black stuff hewn out of the earth was called King Coal. It powered the Industrial Revolution centuries before anyone began to think about climate change and fossil fuels fell into disrepute. But now, in the 21st century, coal is rearing its head again as king once more. Growing demand for it in Asia has created a new boom, which is welcome news for producers such as Australia, Indonesia, Russia, etc. Coal is big. Coal's dirty. You try and stop them burning it. Not a hope. Leave you with that for the weekend. Um, enjoy. Bye.